Civ Beyond Earth feels much different from Civ 5 right away. When you land on planet, you're immediately met with these hostile aliens. And of course you have barbarians in Civ 5, but this is gonna feel a lot different. We're huge fans of both science and science fiction. So we wanted to make sure the game starts in a believable place, but it starts moving out very quickly and taking these little steps into the more fantastic. So for that, we looked you know, far and wide, especially the, the canon of classic sci-fi literature. There's really no shortage of, uh, of great sci-fi material out there that we drew from. One of the things that we had a great time doing was figuring out who the cast of characters is gonna be. And the way we did that is we started with uh, the geopolitical landscape of Earth as it is right now, and introduced this thing that we called the Great Mistake. The result of that was this reshuffling and mass migration of people. So uh, the nations sort of reassembled themselves and clawed their way out of this dark age, and it's at the point where they're finally back on their feet again that the game begins, where they're sending spaceships to new worlds. Their leaders represent this multicultural mixing that happens. So a lot of them speak a mixture of languages. For example, the American Reclamation Corporation. How may the corporation serve you? Uh, the sponsor that you can pick for that, Suzanne Fielding, speaks a combination of Spanish and English sort of interchangeably. Imposible. A lot like how uh, everybody swears in Chinese and Firefly. You know, it tells a lot about what happened without saying much. <laughs> So the tech web is probably the most fundamental change to this game. Tech is really the engine of civilization, and in historic save it follows a pattern that most people already recognize. But in this game, you're moving forward into an uncertain future, which has technologies that we obviously haven't invented yet. So we wanted to make a structure that would let the player play exploratively and kind of discover along the way what technologies were going to be useful or advantageous or just interesting to them. And the tech web is so big that you will not get all the technologies in the course of any one game, which is another departure from Historic Civ. But then you start again and end up with a completely different blend that makes your game more exploratory and also more replayable. The orbital layer is a really exciting addition to Civilization. The ground is always the star of the show and the, the orbital layer is there to reinforce that drama that's going on underneath. So when you land on the planet almost right away, you can go back into the orbit around it and put up tactical or economic or research satellites that are gonna augment or change up the situation on the ground. So, you know, defend yourself from invasion or make your cities into economic powerhouses or spy on your neighbors and steal things from them. That's just one of, uh, of several sort of fundamentally new ways to play the game. People over there, are you ready for the awesomeness? After we announced the game, it was really special to sit in that room at PAX East with, you know, 700 of our biggest fans. It was especially gratifying because we're Civ fans too. We grew up on those games, we love those games. And this game was really inspired by that. It's really our thank you to the fans who've been asking us to make this game for a long time and we've wanted to make for a long time.